psychological technique to deal with your own failures and your, your and your and your own shortcomings. So that that brings me there two key things I want to chat to you about is that is perseverance like how how do you prevail through the times when you don't have those great results and the second one is I want to understand this concept of precision rhinoplasty. So perhaps you can tell the listeners what you mean by precision rhinoplasty. Bit of context perhaps um I I uh I thought, well, do you know, surgery should be about elite performance. And we hear so much about the support that athletes get, the attention that athletes have to their performance. We hear about uh, marginal gains, and we hear about great teams that have achieved with that sort of approach. And I thought, well, why does nobody ever say, take that approach in surgery? We never hear about generic performance, um, number one. Number two, again, using a sporting analogy, I love to ride my road bike. That, that's really a great thing for me. There's a famous American cyclist called Greg LeMond, and he said, it never gets easier, I just get faster. So, you know, the, clearly things that I would not be happy with now, I might have been happy with five, 10 years ago, so we keep raising our own bar. And if you're not careful, all that does is demoralize you and you get negative. And then you say, uh, you know, then the fear of failing takes over. Then you think, well, actually, do you know what? I just don't want to do that sort of case anymore and so on and so on. And at the same time, I was talking to a colleague who's a headhunter and he he runs an extremely successful international American-based headhunting company. And when they're putting executives into new positions they give them psychological coaching to help them manage their own expectation and to help them identify what it is they're really wanting to achieve and i thought that's really interesting so that's what really interests me now so i'm 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 much less interested in a left brain reductionist approach to surgery that says if you follow this algorithm you'll get the right result i'm 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 much less interested in do you do dorsal reduction or do you do push down or whatever. What I'm interested in is saying, look, I've been doing this sort of thing for the last 25 years and I'm still not doing it as well as I should. So how do I just continue to do what I do but do it better? And that and that relates to things that the Stoics told us, you know, in 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 300 BC really about resilience. It's about it's about having a positive mindset. It's about having a learning mentality rather than a judging mentality, which is a, a naive, stupid way to do things. So, so, so for me, it's, um, it's about reconnecting with the things that you love, consciously saying, okay, why did I choose this in the first place? Why do I really love doing this? And remembering that. And then during surgery, not thinking about the outcome and what the slides are gonna look like at your next lecture, but thinking, okay, I'm here and I'm just, want to control the things I can control to the best of my ability. So that that's the performance related thing. If it's a good result, that's a bonus, but all I can do is control the bits I can. And, and people have written about flow. And so it's the concepts of flow, it's focus, presence, acceptance, and determination. And you can read forever about each one of those things. But, but if at the end, the, f- the phrase I really like is that gleaning a quiet moment of satisfaction at the end of surgery you put the put the instruments down and you're not running around and you know singing along to guns and roses you just think you know that was that was just that was just great and you feel it inside um now it could turn out that they have a bleed they get an infection but i can't worry about that at that moment i did the best i could and 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 that and I think if you do that, and then if it doesn't work out, as I say, you're not judging yourself against, well, I bet, I bet Cameron could have got a better result. And actually, I saw his slides, beautiful results. How do I get those results? You know, rugby, Dan Carter, he doesn't, he doesn't convert every time he kicks the ball. But some days it's raining. Some days the ground is wet. It's not every day a sunny day with, with you know, um, so, 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 it, it's realizing that you have to accept these things and um, and just do the best you can at the time. And and there are 
lots of sophisticated different ways of doing that. But that really interests me. And I think, and speaking to someone recently who understands a lot about these things, I said, look, I, th- I think I really try and flow quite well now. So, so what do I do? And, and, and she said to me, identify in advance the things that are the things that are really difficult for you and just really concentrate on those. Now, and then you don't hear the music playing in the background. You, you know, you, ju- you, just, you just don't. You're really honed in on the bits that are difficult. Um, and I think that's what marginal gain is, really. Um, so identifying the things that you love, think about those rather than all the extraneous things and what everybody's going to think of your results, and then concentrate on the really difficult bit. Really super concentrate. Um, and, and, I th- and that, to me, is going to provide me with more reliable and consistent results and, and a better sense of personal satisfaction than saying, do you know what? I'm going to relearn my swing. I'm going to use this technique now, not that one. So, so, so that, that, that is a very personal approach, but that's, that's where I am now. Wow. No, thank you for sharing that. That's, it gives me so much to think about. I, I think back one of the key moments in my Olympic paddling was a, a Possibly one of the nicest quotes is by Sir Steve Redgrave. So um, you obviously know him, but for the listeners who don't, he's one of the most successful Olympians ever. For five Olympics in a row, he won the gold medal. And he got interviewed and he said there are two kinds of athletes who go to the Olympics. Now, I'm saying there are two kinds of rhinoplasty surgeons who do rhinoplasty because to get there, it's difficult, you know, to qualify for the Olympics. And he says there are two types of athletes who go to the Olympics. Athletes who go to win the gold medal and tourists. <laughs> and I thought, great. And I think this is it. This is there's that special like thing about how can I improve my performance? I'm not interested in the audience. I'm interested in sitting in this moment, this kind of hallowed moment of, of two hours or three hours in a person's life where I want to improve something that I've worked that hard for to get, the, get to. That's fascinating. Eh? Well, with your history of Olympic sport, you really know what I'm talking about. And it does amaze me that that's never been transferred to the surgical arena. It's a very strange thing. Um, we, I suppose we, we grow up in medicine with, you know, grand rounds and morbidity and mortality meetings. And one surgeon says, your anastomosis fails, mine never fails, you know, therefore it must be your fault. Well, that's just, that's just ridiculous. I've been at an, I've been at a rhinoplasty meeting, and the perf- and the the session was entitled um, "Cases That Have Challenged Me." And one very eminent rhinoplasty surgeon stood up and said, "Nothing ever challenges me." And I thought, "Well, make of that what you will." But I I didn't think that showed a great deal of insight or humility. So um, <laughs> so, so so you know, that's some interesting mindsets in all of these things, but. Um, you know, you, you 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 can only control what you can control, and and um, and then. You know, it, it, but you've got to choose to engage in the first place, haven't you? Again, you know, mixing sport and and surgical metaphors. But there's a guy called Paul Fornell who writes about cycling, and he was writing about cycling at Mont Ventoux, and he said, if you don't want to find out, if you want to find out about yourself, cycle to the top. If you just don't want to know, just don't start. So, so, so you, you, you've got to engage rather than just be a, a sort of passive entrant into these things. Um, and I'm all for people who innovate. I think it's fantastic. Um, um, you know, and there are pioneers uh, who bring on new surgical te- techniques. Um, but I think, you know, it's, you know, it's not innovation for the sake of it. You've then, you've then got to, you've then got to um, be very, diligent about ensuring that you know it's worth trying a trying a new golf swing you know i mean you know why not try and perfect the swing you've got rather than stop and start a new swing if there's not a really clear-cut yes. difference in benefit yeah yeah okay um let me try and change tact uh, track a little bit here 